Hey guys, it's Brian and Kim again, and I'm here with another review for The Walking Dead final season, The Walking Dead Season 11B. So I did enjoy this half more than the first half of Season 11, um, but this half had a lot of issues. I think this half was decent. I think it was decent. Uh, it wasn't really good. It's just all right. You know, it's just okay. So I'm going to list off the five pros and five cons. Pro number one is Lance as the villain in this half. He was really fantastic. I mean, the writing for him has been really good these last eight episodes. You know, from him uh, greeting Alexandra to him taking over all the communities in just, se you know, seven, eight episodes. Uh, very well done. And the actor does an amazing job. He's got so much charisma. Uh, way more than Leah and Pulp ever did. Uh, I mean, Lance is so convincing. You know, he's not a guy who's like trying to sell you a car or insurance. He's he's so much more convincing. He's such a good villain uh, because I know like I know he's shady and he's got ulterior motives. You know, he's got secrets. He's hiding stuff, but he's very right in so many situations. I mean, when he talked to the survivors about how they were too stupid to know a good deal right in their face kind of thing, when he told that to Maggie and then told that to Eugene. And you know how he mentions how they would have st all starved if it wasn't for the Commonwealth. I mean, that could, and you know how Eugene and them lied and also kept things from them. Uh, that is very true. You know what I mean? Like, Lance could smell the, the lies and uh, obviously he's a liar. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that like he kind of shows that like, hey, uh, you guys are no better than me, basically. Which, um, you know, he kind of proves the characters right when he talks, you know, says these certain things, which I like. And when he wrote, um, and I love when he roasted Aaron in episode 12, where, you know, Aaron said that they can just, you know, find a way to make things work in Alexandria without the Commonwealth. And he's like, oh, yeah, because things were going so well before we showed up. I, like, I laughed so hard because th that is so true. I'm just thinking, like, um, Lance is a villain who, you know, for the most part uses logic and, you know, common sense and, you know, realism, uh, which is cool. So, um, you know, Lance is like this little finger villain, you know, and I love it. Like him, uh, as he slowly gets more desperate, like, you know, he basically becomes two-faced by episode 16. You know, he takes over the communities, Alexandria, Hilltop, and, and Oceanside. Uh, kind of reminds me of the Peacekeeper ending from Dying Light 2, if you guys didn't know what that is, uh, or if you guys do. Um, and, and also where he flips the coin, like Two-Face, to decide whether or not to kill Oceanside. I mean, that, that was so crazy, you know. Uh, I can't wait to see what the show does with him in um, the last half, you know, of, of the series and the season. So, um, yeah, he's just a better villain than Pulp and Leah ever were. Number two pro is the plots. I did like how all the plots actually mattered in this half, unlike the last half. You know, like Connie and Kelly are doing stuff that matters. You know, they're investigating. Ezekiel's doing stuff that matters. He's, um, you know, helping people, you know, kind of uh, bringing up his reputation in the Commonwealth. You know, he's kind of becoming recognizable. Uh, you know, he's doing stuff that matters. Even Sebastian with the whole getting uh, his uh, money thing. Uh, even that's mattering to the story. You know, it's not just this forgotten plot line. I mean, I like how the characters are plotting against the Commonwealth instead of like, oh, let's take over kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like they're doing it in a smart way. Uh, the characters are actually moving the story forward in the Commonwealth, exposing, you know, the Milton and Lance scandals and corruptions. And, um, you know what I mean? Because uh, like I thought the show was going to do, oh, let's take over the Commonwealth sort of thing, you know, from the inside. And like, no, that that's idiotic. Like they don't have the numbers, but do, doing this whole exposing the Milton plot, uh, that's way smarter. So I do like that. And number three, actually, this is going to surprise you guys. It's actually the Reapers. Um, you know, it took six episodes, but we finally uh, got to see the Reapers become a threat again. I mean, the fight with Carver in episode nine fighting um, you know, Negan, Elijah, Maggie was so good. I mean, yes, this is what we wanted to see from the Reapers, um, you know, from, from like throughout the entire arc, because, you know, the, the show said that they were ex Navy SEALs, ex mercenaries, you know, um, the fighting re was realistic. The core choreography was so good uh the way carver took out all of them pretty much and i'm just like yes like like this is this is what i wanted to see you know like the realism was good the fighting was good the show said that hey these guys are great fighters and they actually backed up uh you know what what it said in like uh so like also for the first time in forever we got to see a group that was more skilled than our own group which was so refreshing you know what i mean um i, I mean i was surprised that you know uh, the Reapers could fight this well. I wanted to see more of it, but I'm glad we got what we got. So number four is the action. The action was pretty good this half. It was a lot better than the last half. 
Um, you know, when the group fought the Reapers hand to hand, it felt realistic, and I liked it. I already told you guys that. Uh, there was some good, you know, Walker action, you know, Walker gore, um, you know, Gabriel killing uh, that zombie, you know what I mean? Aaron killing some zombies. Uh, Daryl, Aaron, and Gabriel fighting the Commonwealth soldiers. When they did the whole slow motion thing and the gunfire, uh, that was pretty cool. Um, maybe the fight was not 100% realistic, but I did like the whole slow motion and how they had the, you know, uh, guns firing. I felt like they kind of felt realistic with, with the, you know, shooting the guns, you know. Um, it, it wasn't like season eight where they were just firing an entire, uh, you know, uh, magazine of ammo into the other character. No, like they actually did it more realistic. So I like that. Uh, the fight between Maggie and Leah was decent. Um, you know, how those, those two, um, you know, women, you know, went at each other in the cabin, you know, it was kind of brutal and like, yeah, that was good. Uh, some, yeah, so some action is good because I felt like 11A just didn't have enough. Uh, so number five, the last pro is the characters being good. You know, uh, Daryl finally, you know, was kind of starting to change as a character with him getting a job at the Commonwealth for the kids, Judith and RJ. And I did like that. I, I did like Daryl seeing Daryl as his kind of like father figure uh, provider for the group, you know, um, you know, Rosita go, becoming a soldier too and getting more, uh, that, that was awesome, you know, um, you know, and Ezekiel decided to make his life count. He got the surgery, he's helping people. Um, you know what I mean? Like that, that, that's good. Uh, I'm glad they're giving himself something for him to do. Uh, and the little Judith and RJ we got was, you know, kind of good with, uh, them at the Commonwealth. Realistically, it would make the most sense that the kids are, you know, being safe and they're living their life as kids. Um, and even though I did not enjoy Maggie too much this half, I, I thought some of the stuff they did with her was good. You know, Negan, it was interesting, uh, the development between them. And, you know, Aaron and Gabriel were also really good this half. Uh, you know, the characters were, uh, they acted very consistent. They made decisions for the most part that weren't stupid or out of character. And uh, like I mentioned, Rosita got more to do, uh, which was good because she was really underused for the last two years in the show. And I missed her. I'm glad she's getting more screen time. And the show is remembering, you know, she's a character and, you know, like a main character. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, guys, now, unfortunately, we will get to the cons. And this is going to be a big one. Okay, so con number one is the Commonwealth scale. Uh, the show's budget absolutely sucks. There's no way around it. I mean, the Commonwealth is supposed to have 50,000 people, but we only see one street and some interior shots of, like, you know, the offices, offices and apartments. Like, where is the hospital or Judith's school? Like where is everything from each other like you know what i mean like i need a map of the community where are the community's walls or the gates where do they grow their food how big really is the commonwealth to have such a loose population in the streets i mean we don't see that many people in the streets uh like where's the other branches of the commonwealth too you know where's greensville from the comic um where's the other outposts you know because they can't all fifty thousand be in that lo one location you know in ohio they just can't be you know i want to learn more about the commonwealth how it operates um, you know, how are the communities different from each other? I want to I want to learn the lore of the communities, you know, I mean, seriously, the show doesn't have the budget, you know, to have Lance trade with the CRM. So he trades with these weird, you know, rednecks in episode 11, the rednecks that made the drugs like what? Like that was so disappointing. And, and why does Pamela host that party, you know, in episode 10? Why did she host it in the train station? Uh, it's pretty obvious they're reusing the same set and it, it's painfully, you know, obvious and noticeable. Um, you know, when Daryl and, you know, Rosita became soldiers, like, uh, in episode 10, like, why were there only six recruits, uh, when Daryl and Rosita, you know, um, were told by Mercer when they joined as soldiers, like, like, shouldn't there be more, uh, you know what I mean? Like six of them, like, that's just so little, like, I'm sorry, but this is unacceptable. Uh, you know, I, I want to see it like in the comics and, you know, there should be hundreds of people in the streets, but the streets are so empty. The hallways in, you know, in apartment complexes are empty. Uh, no one's living you know, in them, like, you know, Mercer can just say, oh, I killed two two of my men in the hallway, uh, and just nobody hears that, like, come on, AMC, like, AMC, this is the biggest community from the comic, and you ruined it, like, uh, like, you guys remember the police station, you know, um, that Daryl and Rosita go to in, um, episode, like, uh, I think it's, a uh, 14, I, I believe, um, you know, like, that police station looks awful, you know what I mean, like, and, and like, uh, so like yeah when mercer was working out in the, in the gym like a public gym mind you why was he all by himself like where was everyone else um like guys think about this you know uh this is the final season uh of amc's flagship show and they can't increase the budget like that makes no sense the commonwealth in the show doesn't look like it holds fifty thousand people in it and it's not me you know other walking dead youtubers are noticing this 
uh, as a serious issue, and you know that's just terrible AMC. Like, like, like please do better. Uh, the number two is plot armor. So this was way worse than you know um, 11A. You know, with the plot armor because Daryl, you know, without the armor on, you know, Gabriel with one eye, Aaron has one arm, and they're able to kill like eight or like a dozen fully armed Commonwealth soldiers. Um, you know, in the finale, uh, you know, in, in episode 16, and it's just like, no way, I'm sorry, that's, that, that's, that's so fake, um, you know, it's like, listen, I get their main characters, I get their skill, but it, it's just weird that Aaron and Gabriel are shooting this well, like, like, Daryl's an amazing fighter, I get that, but Aaron should not be great with a gun, Gabriel should not be great with a gun, you know, because of their disabilities, Aaron, like, Gabriel has one eye, and Aaron has one arm, like, you know, that should affect the character, but it just doesn't, you know, um, you know, and, and like Maggie, she should have been killed by Leah, uh, flat out, you know, I mean, Leah wanted revenge against Maggie. She killed those Commonwealth soldiers without mercy. She sacrificed Lance's men, you know, and now all of a sudden she, she finally gets to kill her, but instead she knocks Maggie out and then she's like, oh, I'm going to tell you my evil plan. Like, no, this is, no, I'm sorry. No one does this in real life. Like Leah, you, it's like Leah knew Maggie had a spinoff with Negan. Like, like, come on, AMC. So number three is the Stephanie, Shira, and Max scandal. Um, everyone knew this was going to happen. This plot line was so bad. It was so confusing. Uh, this was not a good plot twist in the show. I mean, we all knew Shira was the fake Stephanie and that Max was the real, uh, you know, girl on the radio that Eugene was talking to. But it's like, but this twist didn't come out of nowhere. Uh, this twist, everyone knew it because AMC confirmed Margot Bingham was the voice for Stephanie. You know what I mean? She was casted as the voice. And, and also like, um, you know, Stephanie was never real, you know, she lied to Eugene, her name was Max, and, and, like, the fact that Lance and Mercer did this whole fake Stephanie thing, um, you know, with Shira, and then Shira disappeared, like, um, and her real name's Mac, Max, it was, it was just really confusing, like, I, I don't really get the point of the twist. Okay, so number four is missing characters again, so, um, yeah, so once again, in the last half, um, so in episode 8 to 16, like, where was Barbara? Where is Scott? Okay, I I'm sorry, like, I, I can't believe that Scott, Scott's not even in the show, and I hate him, like, I want AMC to kill him off so bad, because I'm just like, seriously, what? Is he, is he seriously gonna survive to the end of the show? Like, you know, where was Yumiko? Because, like, we didn't see her in, since episode 10, like, like, you know, Magna was gone for six whole episodes, you know, we see Rachel in Oceanside in episodes 12 and 16, but she doesn't do anything, Oceanside doesn't do anything, and, and in the lineup, you know, the final scene of episode 16, when Lance lines up, uh, Oceanside, like, we don't see Sydney, Luke, Jules, like, where are they? I know Dan Fogler is filming for Fantastic Beasts, but it's been, like, two years, like, since Luke has been in the show, like, what is going on? Um, you know, he was, he was last in A Certain Doom, so, like, seriously, like, that's like forever ago, you know, and, 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 and like not seeing these characters that should be there. It's hurting the show, not seeing these characters. It breaks the immersion and my enjoyment of it, you know, and when, you know, they, we should be seeing these characters. AMC seriously needs to, to do a better job with this. Like seriously, do they not care anymore? Yeah. So number five and the last con is the poor deaths. I mean, once again, uh, no big deaths this half. Yes, we get some minor character deaths, like, you know, Alden, Marco, and, I mean, Leah, but these are not big deaths, like, once again, like, seriously, I don't get it, could we not have lost Gabriel, uh, and, and someone from Magnus Group, you know, it's been three seasons, they've been in the show for three seasons, and no one from Magnus Group has died, it's just really weird, uh, this is the Walking Dead, you know, not the Walking Life, people said that they, they didn't do any big deaths in the first half, because they were saving them for part C, and, you know, sorry, part B and C, uh, for, you know, the second and third halves, but we clearly saw that they weren't saving any deaths for Part B, so, you know, they didn't do any, so I doubt AMC is going to kill off anyone big in Part C, because it seems like they're following, following some sort of pattern of not killing anyone off, uh, maybe to set up room for spinoffs and stuff, so yeah, um, I guess I'm going to give this half a 7.5 out of 10, uh, I know it seems like I was very negative, but like I said, I think this was a decent half on, like, 11A, it has some payoffs, and I am kind of excited to see where 11C goes, you know, uh, but it could have been so much more. I mean, the acting and characters, um, you know, acting's fantastic. Characters, really good, but the budget is so terrible. Like, seriously, do they only spend, 
you know, two, three million dollars an episode, and most of that goes to Norman. Like the show needed to improve the budget budget for, you know, the last season, you know. Uh, but sadly, I feel like it's too late. You know, what I mean, the damage is done. I mean, even if the story's you know interesting, the a and actors are the best in the world. Without the proper budget, a show is going to be bad. Sadly, you know, what I mean, because it's not going to have the budget to keep it up. You know. Um, yeah, guys, so that's going to be it for my review. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe if you like this and want to see more. And please let me know down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, uh, all right, guys, I will see you all next time. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye.